Picture this. You're sitting at your laptop, casually clicking through tabs, maybe streaming a show, maybe even pretending to work while secretly scrolling memes. On the surface, everything looks calm. But under the hood, your computer is basically running an Olympic sprint, except it's doing that sprint billions of times every second without breaking a sweat. So how does a bunch of metal, silicon, and electricity pull that off? To understand, let's take a little trip inside the brain of a computer. the central processing unit, or CPU. This thing is the quarterback, the maestro, the bossy traffic cop that keeps your device humming along. At the most basic level, a computer isn't thinking in English or math equations. It's thinking in electricity. The entire system is built on transistors, tiny switches made out of semiconductors that can be either on or off. On means electricity is flowing, off means it's not. In other words, one or zero. That's the foundation of binary code. Every app, photo, song, or video game you've ever used is really just a massive string of ones and zeros being flipped on and off at lightning speed. If humans had to live like that, we'd go insane. Imagine yes, communicating yes, only yes, by saying yes no, or no, no to everything, no. but fast enough to write Shakespeare. Here's where it gets wild. A modern processor can contain tens of billions of transistors on a piece of silicon smaller than your fingernail. Each one is like a microscopic light switch. Back in the 1940s, the first digital computers used actual vacuum tubes, big clunky glass bulbs that would burn out like old light bulbs. Those machines filled entire rooms and could only handle a handful of calculations per second. Fast forward to today, Apple's M-series chips, or Intel's latest processors, pack more transistors than there are people on Earth. That's how we go from takes a whole building to add 2 plus 2 to runs a 3D video game while checking your email. But just having billions of switches isn't enough. You need timing. Enter the clock speed, a tiny crystal oscillator inside your CPU that ticks billions of times per second. Each tick is like a metronome, telling the transistors when to open or close. If your processor runs at 3 gigahertz, that means the clock ticks 3 billion times every second. With every tick, instructions can be fetched, decoded, executed, and stored. That's why computers don't just sort of multitask. They juggle so fast it looks seamless. Now let's zoom in on how those billions of ticks get used. A CPU follows something called the fetch-decode-execute cycle. Fetch. The CPU grabs the next instruction from memory. Decode. It figures out what the instruction actually means, like add these two numbers or move this file. Execute. The CPU carries it out using its circuits, and it does this billions of times per second. Imagine an assembly line where a car is built from scratch in a split second, and then billions more cars roll out right after. That's your CPU handling instructions. But wait, it's not just one worker. Modern CPUs have multiple cores. Think of a core as a worker in a kitchen. A single core CPU is like one chef trying to cook appetizers, main dishes, and desserts all by himself. A multi-core CPU is like having a full kitchen staff. One handles the salad, another grills the steak, and someone else is already baking dessert. That's why your laptop can stream a movie, run a spreadsheet, and check emails with without collapsing in exhaustion. Each core handles different parts of the workload, and modern operating systems are really good at spreading tasks around. How do we keep squeezing more speed out of computers? For decades, the magic trick was shrinking transistors. Smaller transistors mean more of them fit on a chip, and electricity flows through them faster. That's why your smartphone today is thousands of times more powerful than the Apollo computers that sent astronauts to the moon. Gordon Moore, one of Intel's founders, predicted this trend back in the 1960s. His famous Moore's Law said the number of transistors on a chip would double every Every two years. For a long time, that held true. But here's the catch. We're now reaching the atomic scale. Transistors are so small, just a few nanometers wide, that we're basically playing Jenga with atoms. Now, if you think your gaming PC is powerful, imagine supercomputers. These monsters aren't just using billions of transistors. They're connecting millions of processors together. The fastest supercomputers in the world can perform quadrillions of calculations per second. That's the equivalent of every single human on Earth doing math homework 24-7 and still not catching up. And guess what? All of this still comes down to the same simple principle, flipping switches billions and billions of times every second. So far, we've peeked inside the CPU, seen its tiny switches, and watched it juggle billions of instructions like a caffeinated circus performer. But here's the kicker. Computers don't stop at CPUs. They've evolved into a whole ecosystem of specialized chips, each one designed to push the limits of speed and efficiency. Let's break it down. Think of the CPU as a gourmet chef. It's versatile, smart, and can whip up a wide variety of dishes. But what if you don't need fancy cuisine? What if you just want to serve 10 thousand burgers at once. That's where the GPU, or graphics processing unit, comes in. GPUs are like fast food workers in a burger assembly line. Each one is flipping patties, adding pickles, and wrapping buns in perfect synchronization. They may not be as smart as the head chef, but when it comes to handling a massive number of small, repetitive tasks, they dominate. Originally designed to render video game graphics, millions of pixels being calculated simultaneously, GPUs turned out to be a secret weapon for everything from cryptocurrency mining to artificial intelligence. Training 
a neural network to recognize cats in YouTube videos, a CPU would take months, a GPU, maybe a couple of days. And now there's a new star. AI accelerators like Google's Tensor Processing Units, TPUs, or custom neural chips inside your smartphone. These aren't just flipping burgers, they're like entire automated kitchens designed specifically for one dish. Instead of handling every kind of instruction, AI chips are optimized for the matrix math that machine learning loves. That's why your phone can now translate languages in real time, or recognize your face faster than you can say password one, two, three. Of course, crunching numbers is pointless if you don't have somewhere to store them. That's where memory comes in. RAM random. Access memory is like your computer's short-term memory. It's fast but temporary. Turn the power off and poof, it's gone. Storage like SSDs is the long-term memory. It's slower than RAM, but it sticks around. The CPU and GPU constantly shuttle information back and forth between RAM and storage. The faster this communication happens, the faster your apps feel. Ever notice how opening dozens of browser tabs makes your laptop crawl? That's because your RAM is basically screaming, I can't hold anymore. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, heat. All this flipping of transistors generates energy, and energy creates heat. That's why gaming PCs sound like jet engines. They're trying not to melt down. Heat is the bottleneck of modern computing. You can't just keep cranking clock speeds higher, because at some point your laptop would double as a frying pan. That's why chip designers get creative. Instead of just boosting speed, they add more cores, optimize efficiency, or offload tasks to specialized chips. Think of it like athletes learning new strategies instead of just trying to run faster until their legs fall off. Remember Moore's Law, the idea that transistors double every two years? Well, we're hitting a wall. Transistors are now only a few atoms thick. Any smaller and weird quantum effects kick in, like electrons tunneling through barriers they're not supposed to cross. It's like if your car started occasionally teleporting through stop signs just because the road got too narrow. So what's next? Scientists are experimenting with new materials like graphene, new architectures like 3D stacking chips, and even new paradigms like quantum computing. Quantum computers flip the script. Instead of bits that are one or zero, they use qubits that can be one, zero, or both at once, thanks to quantum superposition. Add in entanglement, Einstein's spooky action at a distance, and suddenly you can solve certain problems unimaginably faster. Does this mean your next iPhone will be quantum? Nope. These machines are still experimental, freezing atoms close to absolute zero and sitting in labs that look like sci-fi movie sets. But if they become practical, they could crack problems that stump today's supercomputers, like simulating molecules for new medicines or optimizing entire global supply chains. Now, let's bring this down to Earth. Why should you care that your CPU is juggling billions of operations? Because it's literally powering everything you do. When you hit play on Netflix, your device is decrypting data, buffering video, and adjusting picture quality on the fly. When GPS gives you turn-by-turn -turn directions, your phone is crunching satellite signals and calculating the fastest route. When NASA lands a rover on Mars, it's only possible because computers on Earth simulated millions of possible scenarios in advance. The everyday miracles of modern life, from video calls with relatives across the country to instant Google searches, only feel normal because computers are sprinting in the background. That the same physics that let your phone autocorrect ducking into something less polite is also sending spacecraft across the solar system. All thanks to those billions of tiny switches ticking away every second.